Hey guys, this is Lord of Reviews, and this is going to be a pretty long and complicated Photoshop tutorial. That doesn't sound very exciting, does it? But it's going to actually create something pretty exciting. It's going to create a bloody sword. Yep, pretty random, but it's going to create a bloody sword. But the idea isn't to actually create a bloody sword, but I mean, you can use it as a bloody sword if you want to. I mean, if you're creating like an action scene, you can use it as a bloody sword. But the main point of this is to actually learn the, the techniques that are used to create the bloody sword because they're often incredibly useful in lots of different things. The thing we'll be starting with is this sword here. Not that exciting. Well, I mean, it is pretty exciting. It's like a picture of a sword that a company is uh, selling. Pretty exciting there. <laughs> I don't know why I said it wasn't exciting. It's very exciting. Um, but we're going to make it into, we're going to de delete all the, uh, stuff inside of it. So it's just going to be an outline and we're going to use Photoshop completely to make it 3D shiny metal sword and it's going to have blood on it. And no, we're not going to take a blood picture and put the blood picture on it. It's actually going to be, uh, blood made with Photoshop and it's going to be look, and it's going to look kind of cool. And you don't even have to add the blood if you don't want to. But I made this sort of outline. I just used it and created an outline. And that's what we're going to use right now. Uh, this link to this picture will be in the description. Here's what we'll be making. It's a sword, yeah. And it's 3D, and that's created with Photoshop. And yet it has this blood on the end. You can either make the entire thing covered in blood, or you can make, or I'll also show you how to make just the, just this blade part bloody. So, we'll take our sword outline. Let me just drag it into a new window here. No, 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 don't do that. Okay, good Photoshop. All right, now, it's just a transparent image, and it's got this little outline. Uh, don't worry about this little black bar on the edge. That's just what I, this is a little mess up of mine, and it doesn't make any difference. In fact, I think it might actually uh, help it with the effect. Go to image mode, RGB, because this, is, this was a GIF, and GIFs are always end up indexed. Uh, when you save them. Alright, so go to this. Then uh, we're going to go to blending options. And I have a style set for this. I want to kind of make it a surprise. I have a style set for this. Uh, two styles, actually. You're, we're going to end up making two styles. You don't have to make it into a style, but I highly recommend you do. Because it'll let you use this effect later. So we're going to start with my style, and I'm going to show you how you do it. Alright, the, the drop shadow is multiply black. Uh, with 75 opacity uh, with an angle of negative 63 with the global light on a distance of 4 spread of 0 and size of 3 then the quality is unchanged I mean if, if, if it is changed for you like if you made something default just make it regular no anodization and no noise outer glow the blend mode will be screen opacity 75 and noise 0 I believe that's the default but I'm not sure with a color of black elements technique will be softer Spread will be 12, and size will be 95. Col quality, the contour will be regular, range 50, jitter 0, and no anodization. That might be default too. All right, inner glow. This this is where it gets a little bit more different. All right, blend mode will be screen, opacity of 100, noise 0, color red. See that checked. Technique will be softer. Source will be the edge. And choke and size will be maxed out at 100 and 250 respectively. Quality, I think, is unchanged. Just 50, 0, regular, and no indentization. Bevel and emboss is the most important effect here. Just make the style inner bevel. Just listen carefully, because this is what makes up the 3D. Style is inner bevel. Technique is chisel hard. Instead of smooth or chisel soft, we're going to chisel hard, which makes the cool sword effect. Depth will be 81. Direction up. Size, 152, and soften 0. All these random numbers, they may seem random, but they actually make the effect the best possible. And you can, of course, change them to fit your liking, any of these effects at all. Just kind of play around with it and make it exactly how you want it. Uh, by the way, the outer glow is not required. It's just, it's just a black outline. It's just a black fuzzy outline that I added just to make it look a little better. Usually, if you're putting this in an action scene, you won't want this, act, this outer glow. Just a little note. Then with the shading on the bevel and emboss, it gets really complicated. Use the global light with uh, an angle of negative 63 and an altitude of 69. Then, do gloss contour. This is going to be a custom one. Anti-alias it, and go to here, and choose the second one. It'll be called a cone. Then click on the picture, 
And here's the mapping. Uh, it's using levels, basically. Uh, you can use any one you want, but I formulated one that works very well with this effect. And you can just try and copy this one as best you can, or you can create your own. Just pause the video now and copy it if you want to. Then, highlight mode will be screen white with 100% opacity. Shadow mode will be linear burn with black with opacity at 100. Go to your contour under your bevel emboss. Contour will be the default, the ramp. Go to go no anti-aliasation. Range will be 50. Texture will be at light marble. If you don't have light marble here, click this arrow and go to rock patterns, and then all these cool rock patterns will appear along with the two default ones, or however many you have. They'll appear at the bottom. Then go, then just find the one called light marble. If you don't have rock patterns or light marble, simply load up a texture that isn't very intrusive, just kind of a, a low profile texture that still adds a bit of texture to it. Yeah, you know what I mean. The scale will be 447 and the depth plus 14. Link it with the layer and do not invert it. No set Satan or satin. Uh, yeah, satin. And then on the color overlay, make the blend mode normal and the opacity will be 100 and make it red. Then okay. And you have this bloody sword effect. <laughs> Seriously, just all the stuff you just did created a bloody sword. It kind of looks not quite as bloody over here. But, and then, as it, as it hits the sword, it really makes a natural-looking blood on the sword. Um, now, I'm going to show you how to, to make just the hilt part of the sword not bloody. Alright, take your rectangular marquee tool and highlight the part that you don't want bloody. We're going to have this. Oops. Yeah. We're going to make this part not bloody. Then, click layer via cut actually no that makes it look a little weird layer via copy then go to this new layer let's minimize the effects blending options and turn off the outer glow if you're using that because this will make it look just like the rest of it then we're going to load a new style and I'm going to show you how this works too I have made this style slightly bloody <laughs> I mean it just makes it because, I mean, blood naturally splatters, so it may have splattered onto it a little bit. It makes it look really good. Drop shadow will be exactly the same. Inner glow will be, yeah, this one actually has an inner glow. It'll be exactly the same. Bevel and emboss, this is where it starts to get a little different. Alright, just inner bevel, chisel hard, depth is 81, size is 152, soften is 0. Now, use the global light, and it'll be negative 63 and 69. Same gloss contour, the custom one. Anti-aliasation. Uh, highlight mode will be screen. And then the opacity will be 100. Shadow mode will be linear burn with 100 and black. Contour. Instead of it being 50, make it 75. Then, texture. 447 and plus 14, link with layer, no invert. And color overlay will be white instead of red. And it, it isn't that much changing, but you do have to make sure you pay attention to every change that's here in order to make it in order to make it look good. Now press OK. And there you go. You have the white hilt with a little tracings of blood. And then you have the bloody hint. And of course you can customize this any way you want. You can have certain parts white and certain parts bloody. And certain parts bloody. You can make it all bloody. You can make it all white just for a nice sword effect. See, I'll even do that right now. This is what I originally had. I love this. It's just a nice 3D carved metal sword effect. It's, it's, it's one of my favorite styles. I really like that. And that's basically what you do. It's, it's not mainly for action scenes. Just this exactly for action scenes. But of course you can. Uh, but it's mainly to learn the technique of adding all these complicated bevel and emboss and effects in the blending options to make something so like that. Just, I mean, just look at that. 